and welcome to Arts and Review, celebrating the best in live theater and cabaret in the greater Los Angeles area. This is your host, Julio Martinez, and this is a very strange time for me, because usually I sit here alone talking virtually to my guests, but today I have three in-studio guests. Live theater is indeed coming back to Los Angeles, so please stay tuned to Arts and Review. Now, I have the charming Janet Wood. Hi there. Hi there. Joelle Arqueros. Hello. And Mr. Doug Heverty, the producer. Hi. Well, I can hear all three of you. That's great. <laughs> now, you three are involved in group repertory theater, which I've known since its founding in 1973, when it started out in a laundromat, which is 35 theaters, 35 seats, excuse me. <laughs> and Janet Wood, you were part of the founding members. Yes, I was. And uh, when we started out, we were just a group of actors doing little scenes here and there. And then Lonnie Chapman walks in and... Uh, he became our artistic director and totally transformed us into a little theater group. Um, our first show was La Ronde, and it was so successful that everybody in L.A. wanted to join the group, so we had to move to a bigger space after a year. But it was just great and really innovative and funny and wonderful. Great. Now, this play... Um London Suite is written by Neil Simon. I saw it many years ago in a small repertory theater here in town. And I would love to, uh, Doug, what is the uh, position of this play? How many actors do you have? Because this is an unusual comedy. It's a play, but there are four plays under the play. Yes, exactly right. Um, it's like Plaza Suite and California Suite. So it's a collection of one acts. And when they did it on Broadway, I think they had six actors play all the parts. We have 19. <laughs> we have 19 people in our company ensemble. And uh, You must have double cast some. Yes, we have double cast some. We have, we have one part that's triple cast. Um, but uh, it's very exciting. And if you're a fan of Plaza Suite or California Suite, I think it'll be really fun to discover London Suite. Now, this particular... Uh, scene calls for a mother and a daughter, which calls for two women, and surprisingly, I have two women here. <laughs> Joelle, you're the daughter, are you not? You better get closer to your yes, mic. Yes, I am, Julio. Is this close enough? Yes, but you're going to be very odd stretching that part. Move closer. <laughs> okay. There you go. <laughs> Hello. And uh, Janet, you play the mom. Yes, I do. And you do, do look a lot alike. That's yes, we can be related, absolutely. <laughs> So, how long have you been in rehearsal? <laughs> well, we started rehearsing in uh, February of 2020. Well, oh, that's taking a lot of time. And <laughs> then two weeks after, we were on stage, two weeks after, the pandemic comes. Right. And so everything was closed down. And so our director, Doug Angala, um, said, okay, we're going to be rehearsing on Zoom. At that point, I didn't even know what Zoom was, and um, I quickly learned, uh -huh. and um, then we would rehearse here and there, and uh, maybe every three weeks or once a month, or we'd take off a month, and this went on and on, and uh, until um, now, we are actually going to do it. We open September 17th on the stage inside. So um, this was like the play that would not stop rehearsing. <laughs> now, you're, per you're performing on stage, and you're performing weekends, right? Yes. Yes. And you're running through the 24th. Correct. Now, are you the only two people playing these roles? No, yeah. I have an understudy, uh, Barbara Brunel, who's wonderful, and um, she will have her... Weekend, or uh, if you know, if I can't make it, it you know, so she's there and she's great too. She's great. So how how is the ethic of you have now rehearsed in almost every configuration? Have you rehearsed by phone? Have you rehearsed virtually? We have, we have, <laughs> we've rehearsed by phone. Can I just say 
this play has been such a saving grace through this crazy time. I was, we were so full of fear in the beginning, not knowing what was going on. And Doug, our director, somehow just had this like lifeline, you know, throughout this whole crazy time. And I always felt like I could come back to this play and he was sort of like a theatrical superhero. Right. That's great. D- Doug Haverty, you're uh, the artistic director of Groove Repertory. Yes. But I've known you wearing other hats. Um, you have written two plays that have been performed at uh, Group Rep that have been published by Samuel French. Yes. One of them is a musical that went off Broadway. Yes. And been recorded by Kritzerlin. Yes. That's a lot to happen in a small theater. <laughs> it is. And it was actually developed at Group Rep. Lonnie had a system where we would uh, workshop new plays and then do it for two nights for the public to see what they thought. And we were getting ready to do that. And he came to watch a final run-through, and he said, Nah, we're not going to do a two-nighter. We're going to open this. (laughs) So he just decided then and there it was going to open, and it was supposed to run for five weeks, and it ran for five months. Wow. So I'd like to know the status of group repertory theater. You're opening this to the public. Are you going to announce a season? Yes. Well, we st- we announced a season in 2020. <laughs> and we sold a season. And we have subscribers. And we just told them, okay, we're putting a pause on the season. And when we reopen, we will restart the season. So that is that is exactly what we're doing. So this is play two of the 2020 season. <laughs> ah, <laughs> and uh, have, how have the res- are you restructuring the theater itself for an or- live audience? Uh, not at this point. We have completely redone the air conditioning system and put in HEPA filters and ultraviolet lights, so it's safe and clean. We are also only allowing vaccinated patrons to come to the theater, and they must show proof of their vaccination, and they must wear masks inside the building. So we're doing this specifically to make the audience feel comfortable. And we, all the cast and crew, are also all vaccinated. Well, that's nice to know. Yeah. Well, we didn't want the audience to worry about, oh, my God, those people are so close together. I hope they're <laughs> vaccinated. You know, so. Well, here at KPP, we have also gone through this. We uh, have been working oh, for almost a year with no guests. Uh, virtually, I, I uh, you know, we have good reason to have earphones when only talking to people on the phone. Then there would be the normal accidents. You can't get people online or you can't hear them. Uh, the audio is mixed. Sometimes you're working in a big echo. So we've had to deal with all that. So it is nice to see human voices moving in the still air <laughs> of Studio B. <laughs> yes. Well, it's the same thing at the theater. Um, we opened an outdoor theater this mm-hmm. summer, and our audiences loved it. Mm-hmm. They loved that experience to sit under the stars and have theater again. We thought it would be a nice way to help them get back into the pattern of going to the theater. Where was the outdoor theater? The in bar- our parking lot. lot. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which was called The Yard, which is called The Yard. Yeah. And it was fabulous. You'd sit there and you'd look up and there's the stars and the moon. And everyone was miked and beautifully lit. And it was, and we had chairs that were spaced, that were social distanced, and it was just fabulous. And Julio, we also did a cabaret there. We did a cabaret oh, really? fundraiser. We put red velvet curtains up. It looked like <laughs> Catalina. <laughs> and Bruce Kimmel hosted that, and he did his little talk between all the songs, and it was wildly successful. So you're up and running again. That's good. Yes. And <laughs> we're up and running, he says, with his fingers crossed. <laughs> Well, that is the future of L.A. theater. I know the Fountain Theater went through their similar situation. They opened a parking lot theater. In fact, they almost completely redid Fountain Avenue to create the theater, but they seem to be moving successfully along. So it looks like the look of L.A. theater is going to be different for a while. We'll see how we work out in a year and what the new state of theater will be here. Well, and a lot of people are just playing it safe. They're not doing anything because they don't want to open and have to shut down. But we're going, let's try it. We decided to open the same time Broadway was opening. Yeah, that's great. So we figured, well, we'll we'll follow them. Yeah, we'll ride on that wave. Mm-hmm. 
and we'll see how things go. You know, we usually have an award situation, the Ovation Awards. That's in a kind of jumble right now because yeah. the L.A. Stage Alliance is no more. Right. But there's also the L.A. Drama Critics Circle Awards. There's even the Robbie Awards are still yes. in existence. I remember the Robbie yes. Awards. I won I got one. Me <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> Yeah. And there's the there's the Valley Awards. I'm not sure the that Valley is still Theater. Going. Valley yeah. Theater. Yes. Yeah. So we'll that'll be an interesting situation. Now uh, the group rep uh, does it have a writers workshop? Yes, we do. We we had one when Lonnie was there, and it was very active. And then uh, when he left, it sort of fell apart. And so when I took over, I said I want to revive that. Playwrights Unit. So we had started to do that in 2020. We had started having play readings, and we've got new writer members, We and we've written a lot of content during the uh, pandemic. We wrote uh, five virtual festivals and, and the motel plays. But uh, now we're going to concentrate on full-length plays by our writer members. That would be nice. Do you have a director's workshop or an we actor's don't. workshop? Or? Well, the, the the company is an actor's workshop. Mm-hmm. Yes. It is by nature that. But um, we, we're going to develop new plays and musicals. That's kind of our quest. We should do a little bit of the who, where, when, and why. Okay. If people want to see London Suite, which is opening September 17th, uh, how do they do that? They can call... Our reservation line, which is 818-763-5990, or they can go online on our website, which is The Group Rep. And we've added something new that we're trying with this show, and that is Saturday matinees. Ah. Our Sunday matinees have always been really popular, but we thought, let's try a Saturday and see if that is as popular. So our Saturday matinees are at 1. So you could have an early lunch, see the show, or you could see the show and have an early dinner. The danger of a Saturday matinee, you announce a Saturday matinee, people are going to bring a lot of kids. They think there's going to be cartoons. It's (laughs) possible, yeah. yeah, Because Theater West is that. Yes. Well, they have a a bona fide equity children's theater Mm. that that they do Saturdays at 1. So I I usually use this time to find out more about your personal lives. Uh, Janet, how did you get involved in theater? When I was five years old, I begged my mother to start dancing school a year earlier than my sister did. And finally, just to get me out of the house, she allowed me to. And I, I don't know where I got my love of performing, but there it was. And then when I was about 14, one of my little dancing school partners started studying acting in New York. I had grown up in New Jersey. And so I said, I want to take acting class in New York. And, um, my father said no. My mother said okay. Then fa- my father said okay. <laughs> and then uh, I used to teach dancing to little children and uh, so I could pay for my classes in New York. And then my mother would slip me the bus money. <laughs> and I would go there myself. But w- I knew I wanted to be an actress when they took me to see West Side Story at the Paper Mill Playhouse. Wow. And I looked at that th- show. And I said, oh my God, that's what I want to do. And my first audition in New York, I was about 16, um, was for anybody's. For West Side Story, it was a national and international tour. And I got the role. It was my first audition. (laughs) But of course, my parents wouldn't let me go. I was 16 years old, right? But it all came together, you know. You were perfect height for that role. Yes. I and s- I stayed that height. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the West Coast premiere of it. Now the uh, Steven Spielberg movie's coming. Yes. yes. And I just interviewed David Alvarez, who's playing Bernardo. Oh. And he uh, he's also doing a drama role in a, in a very seedy <laughs> CBS show. We'll talk about that later. Oh. But... Uh, uh, I th- think it's great. So you finally made it out to L.A. So then I came out uh, uh, on a vacation to visit a friend of mine, 
and um, I came out with a list of people to contact, and I started working. And um, I really, I kind of worked it like a business, but I didn't know I was because that's what I did in New York. And uh, I started making a living right away. And then three months later, I did a lead in a movie in Singapore, and then I went around the world, and then it just kept going. Well, that's great. And you joined Group Repertory when it was first founded. Yes, founded. yes, yes. And uh, we actually... We started in 72, but Lonnie came in, and it became the group rep in 73. Uh Uh-huh. Joelle, I've Mm -hmm. known you forever. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) But uh, I I became very aware of you with the original play that you wrote. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sex, Relationships, and Sometimes Love. That's right. Uh, Which was a a series of short scenes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. But what really surprised me about it is you said, well, we're performing in L.A., but it's also performing in New York. Yes, yes, it's performing. It's great for new theater companies. They can use all their members. It's it's sort of been my bread and butter all this time. I can always come back to it. And I've met, like, hundreds of actors during it. It's been, like, a community that I love. But, you know, I went to Hollywood High. Yes. And then I went to NYU. So uh, it was, like, Hollywood, New York, Hollywood, New York. And I did all the cruise ships in New York. Like, that's how I made my living was doing the cruise ships at the Chelsea Piers. Uh-huh. And all those shows, and that was really fun because it it just went to Jersey and back, <laughs> you know. So I could do several a day, and then come home and teach aerobics, and still do other stuff in my schoolwork and everything. I'm a new member, you know. Seventy three, I wasn't even really around. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this theater company has been so embracing. I took my baby with me to my audition uh-huh. for this show, and the director was totally fine with it. And I got the part with my baby in hand. So it kind of shows you what kind of group this is. That's great. Yeah. Doug, I've known you uh, at more being in variety. And uh, I was surprised when you came to group rep doing regular theater. How did you get your start? Um, I was cast as the mayor of Munchkin City <laughs> in the seventh grade in The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Because I hadn't grown yet. <laughs> and I had a huge crush on the Dorothy, who was a ninth grader. And it was hopeless. But I was hooked. That, <laughs> that did it for me. That's, that's how Where I Where were you raised? That was in Central California in Fresno. I was born in Sacramento, and then we moved to Fresno. And uh, where did you go to school? University of the Pacific in Stockton. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. We toured through that. I'm sure you did. And now <laughs> there's the Dave Brubrick... Uh, Brubeck uh, Institute there. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you make your start in Hollywood? Um, I, I had done summer stock every year during college. And then uh, when I graduated, I thought, okay, I'm going to L.A. And just like Janet, I started auditioning. And um, I uh, I was also writing at the same time. And uh, I did both. Well, that's good. <laughs> Now, um, you're all ensconced at the group repertory. You're a member now, Joel? I yes. am, so, yes. <laughs> full-fledged member. <laughs> and I'm proud. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, how does it work double casting a show? I know, I know other, uh, A Noise Within does that. And it is, I always wondered, do, do people beat each other up? <laughs> I mean, how does, how do, well, it's different with every show. And... Um, <laughs> It depends on the availability of the actors that the director wants and how willing they are to work with that many people. Doug Angala was very generous with his time and agreed to have all these alternates, and he's going to work with all of the alternates. We're not like an equity company where the director directs the show, walks away, and then the stage manager works with all the alternates. Doug is going to be doing all of them. Excuse me. And it's all set. You know, like if you when you see the play and you look at the program, it tells you exactly which performances each person is doing. Well, that's me. Yeah. Now I want to reiterate that 
this is the group Repertory Theater. You're located at 1090 Burbank Boulevard. You're in Burbank. You're part, well, you're part of the NoHo. Yes, group. we're yes. actually in NoHo on Burbank Boulevard. Yes. Yeah. And for reservations and information, you can go to 818-763-5990. The play is performing Fridays and Saturday nights at 8 p.m., Sundays at 2 p.m., and you have special added matinees at 1 p.m. on Saturdays. That's right. All patrons must be vaccinated. Proof of vaccination required upon entry. All and patrons... Patrons must wear a mask while inside the theater complex. Well, that's a lot of information. <laughs> it is, but that we're doing that so that everyone feels safe. The theater is safe and clean, and the cast is fully vaccinated, the crew. So it's a vaccinated, safe space. Mm-hmm. And it's running September 17th through October 24th, and it's directed by Doug and Gala. Can you tell me something about his background? Um, Doug has directed many plays for us very successfully. He's also an actor, and he's also a longtime employee at uh, the Walt Disney Company. He works in their archives. Which was one reason he couldn't be here today. Right. He's, <laughs> he's helping Walt right now. <laughs> <laughs> and what will be the next play in the series at uh, Group Rep? Um, we're doing two new plays for the holidays. One is called... Homes for the Holidays by Ken Ludwig, and it's a farce, murder mystery, comedy, Christmas play. And then in our upstairs theater, we're going to be doing something called Christmas Time Origins by Mr. Julio Martinez. (laughs) Well, you didn't have to say that. (laughs) Well, you asked, and it was the perfect segue, but we're very excited about that. And one week after we open with London Suite, we're opening our upstairs theater, uh, directed by Stan Mason. Um, it's called Birthday Club. Birthday Club. By Phil Olson. It's about uh, five women who meet five times a year on their birthdays. Are either of you in that? No, I will. I will be happily watching that because that's running the same time we're running. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, we run in red. <laughs> and uh, I really look forward to the fact that live theater is coming back as live theater in Los Angeles. And um, this is your host, Julio Martinez. Um, I've been here since 1987. And it's we've gone through many different manifestations of live theater here in L.A., Many configurations. I'm glad it seems to be getting back to normal, but uh, time will tell. Yes. And uh, oh, I I still have three minutes, so I can talk to you for a while longer. And I, I'm going to have to ask you, Joel. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> what is your hubby doing? Oh, well, he's acting. He's actually getting fitted right now as we speak for, well, I'm not supposed to say what it is. Oh. Sorry. But he he plays a lawyer. Oh, okay. And it's on Netflix. And that's all I'm going to say. Oh. Yeah. Could you give his name? Nicholas Reed. Oh. Nicholas Reed. <laughs> <laughs> but he loved doing your Christmas shows, of course, Julio. Well, thank you. <laughs> Have you, uh, you started out. You got your big break uh, doing musical theater, uh, Miss Wood. Have you done? Um, you ever done musical since? Oh yes, one of my favorites. We just recently did. Well, 2018. To me, that's recent. That's yeah, recent. Uh, which was a Carol Christmas that Doug Haverty wrote and and Bruce Kimmel did the music and Bruce directed. And that was uh, a, a wonderful, funny, charming musical um, that was about Scrooge, but everything was all women. Oh. So all the parts were women instead of men. Have you ever done a cabaret act? I haven't. That's sort of on my bucket list. I always had a dream to do a show at the Gardenia, but I never did. Who knows? Maybe hey, someday. the year is young. <laughs> <laughs> the Gardenia, that's one of the clubs. That uh, is long gone. I used to love playing there. I, I get a call at the last moment, say they need a guitarist at the Gardenia, and I have to run down. Aww. 
Well, I want to thank you all for being here. It's been great having live people here at Studio B at KPFK. But uh, I want you all out there to keep supporting. Friday is the Arts and Culture Hour at uh, KPFK. Following me is Donna Walker's Pacifica Performance Showcase. Um, she has a pre-recorded show today, but uh, please keep supporting KPFK, and we'll both be back next Friday at 2. And uh, thank you, all of you, for being here. Thank, thank you, you, Julio. Julio. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.